his economic program and he's been on the field he's been granting interviews he's been speaking at budget fora he's been shuttling between Accra and Koforidia but he's gladly agreed to speak to viewers of CTTV on point of view to explain a few points about the budget which may not be clear and he will also answer some of your questions that you've sent in so it's an exclusive with finance minister Ken Oforiata on the point of view you can get in touch with questions on the whatsapp number we'll put on the screen if you are watching on Facebook, there's a live stream with a very exciting conversation going on. Let's hear from you. When we come back, we'll introduce our guest. Don't go away. Play your video. So, so before we bring up uh, Finance Minister Ken Ofriata, uh, right after the budget, City News caught up with a few people on the floor and within the precincts of parliament to share their views on the presentation. And this will be his first post IMF, if you want, budget. So this is like his real, his proper budget with nobody's strings. This is his main budget. Here are some quick thoughts from some Ghanaians about the budget. The few that I listen, I can say that well. There are certain things which I don't know that the government has been able to do in terms of uh, some monetary affairs that are uh, in areas of certain government policy like the NHIS. I could see that all oh, the expectation the government has put that is good, but at times budget will be read and then the expectations are good, but it remains the commitment of government to make sure that he puts in the money, the budget allocation that he has allocated to every sector should go accordingly and then in time so that every project and the stations of certain projects can go on smoothly. The budget for 2019, um, in my opinion, uh, you know, me, uh, you know, miss my expectation. You know, the free, uh, you know, the free uh, senior high school issue featured, and uh, you know, it's a plus. You know, the rules, uh, you know, the reconstruction of the rules also featured. We, we don't want it to be um, 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 a fast. I mean, uh, telling yes but not doing it. The world should be backed by actions. I'm disappointed in this government. So I listened to the whole stuff just for one minute. And the one minute, what truly, really, really put me off was uh, the issue of um, this one district, one factory, and this damn stuff. Bernardo told us right from the beginning that within the first 18 months, most of all these things that they are now saying they are going to do in the next year will be done. And up to date, it has not been done. And you are now telling us that you will do it in the next coming year. What's the guarantee that you're going to do it? It's going to be the normal rhetoric. They say it and say and say and say. 2019, they will tell you that you gave us four years. So give us the last year for us to finish. Anyway, unfortunately, I couldn't listen to all from A to Z. But the, the, the part that I listened to, the minister touched on almost all the sector uh, ministries, should I say that? And to me, they were on point. As far as I know, or as far as I could understand, they were all in, on point. So we are praying that they'll implement all those that he touched so that it will be, in the long run, good for our country. To me, the budgets were good because I'm unemployed. And if you see the sector of unemployment, the government wants to employ some of the youth. So to me, it's good and free education, my burden is gone. And the road sectors, I was expecting certain things and the minister pointed on it. So to me, the budget is good. It's Brunia budget. Wow. So one of the viewers even captured it, the Brunia budget. I'm sure the finance will not be grinning from ear to ear, listening to all the nice, nice things people were saying. So, so Ken, welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you very much. It's, it's good to be here. It's, um, 
Yeah, I haven't been here since our <laughs> since our first meeting. Our first meeting, and um, I appreciate the call back. You yeah. read 175 pages. Mm. We spent over four hours on Thursday. Mm. I thought you would just read a summary. Why did you go through the whole thing? Well, I, I mean, I think it's, it's an opportunity for you know the, the body politic to hear what is really going on. And um, it's such a seminal budget, you know, in a, in a way in which we are really praying for the ownership and, and also um, the sort of the, the realization um, that, you know, we are uh, moving into a period of uh, fiscal sovereignty mm. and we should therefore get ourselves up um, to be able to um, to take this country beyond aid, as the president is saying. Um, so I think it was important to share um, as much of it as possible uh, for the average person. We will continue with the citizens' budget, which will go to about six or seven regions um, mm -hmm. in the coming week. Uh, so by fiscal sovereignty, you're saying that this is the first budget that you are putting together that does not have any pre-agreed fiscal terms because we were in an IMF program when you took over. Yeah. So this is actually your first fully owned I guess you could you could say yeah. that. I mean by I mean you still and um, had projections of um four point five um also budget deficit uh, but we are targeting uh, four point two. Um so yeah we are we are in good shape. It's just um beginning to say, okay guys, uh, the head the headmaster is gone. And if this is your first already. budget, Ken, why didn't you rip the, the format apart? Because you still follow the same format. Why didn't you... I don't know. So, you know, I mean, uh, Bernie, mm -hmm. you, you're talking to um, certain groups of people mm -hmm. between the Ghanaian population who maybe are used to a certain format the investor community, the donor community. Um, but if you realize, even in reading, we, we changed it from sector into, you know, industry, infrastructure, etc. Mm. So that there, was a, there was a change there so mm. that we could focus on what really um, the president was bringing to, to the table. Do, do you think we give too much, um, in terms of sec uh, the donor community, investor community, Ghanaian citizens, it, it will seem as if we pay too much respect to the investor community. And it looks like we travel a lot asking them to come and invest in the country. Mm -hmm. But that the people in whose sovereignty we, mm -hmm. we do all of this, yeah. a lot don't even understand the budget. And it looks like the language of the budget, the focus of the, the budget, budget is aimed at some Fitch, some Moody's, some investment people. And the people who actually have to work and whose taxes are funding the budget, mm -hmm. Either they don't understand it or a lot of what is said is not being said to them. Well, I mean, I did mention that we have the citizen's budget, you mm. know, so, so that, is, that is done. Uh, the language of English just leads you in a certain direction. So, mm. so first of all, we gave up a lot <laughs> when we took English as a lingua franca. Uh, but be it as it may, that is what it is. Uh, but, but truly, I, I think... You know, if one got the pulse of where the country was, mm. um, you could see that the issue of uh, entrepreneurship and credit squeeze and infrastructure and roads and, and therefore the issue of uh, jobs and prosperity through industry and agriculture uh, were, were uppermost. You know, how do you have uh, um, um, sort of an export drive mm. in a certain sense by adding value uh, input substitution industries so that we protect uh, our currency um, and, and really it's jobs, jobs, jobs and people mm. you know at the center of all that that we do. So, so where are you in your vision for the Ghanaian economy? Um, I interviewed you while in opposition you spoke about the economic instability you're on the program with Ken Thompson we spoke a few months ago when you spoke about that sort of stabilization, you mm -hmm. call it fiscal discipline, economic stabilization. Mm -hmm. It's been two years of Nana Akufuado now. Yeah. So uh, where are you in the economic transformation agenda? Actually, I, I'm, I, I don't know where, whether the question is where am I, but where are you? 
<laughs> where am I? Yeah, where do you feel we are? I mean, you, have the, you have the macro picture. I'm just one person. No, you're not. I mean, you, you, uh, each one person is an indication to some degree of where the nation is going. Um, so, yes, we, we started with the... Um, um, with that SEMPA budget, which really was a realization that um, we needed to create a certain sense of economic freedom and take away the state from people's mm -hmm. lives and therefore the abolition of quite a number of taxes in there. Mm -hmm. But also realizing that we needed some and policy clarity and credibility and transparency in the way in which we respond um, to the body politic and our international investors. Uh, and then we, we kind of broke um, the issues into five buckets mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the revenue issues, the expenditure issues, uh, wages and salaries, which are really creeping and consuming uh, the revenues that we had, um, the, the EMAC funds, and the interest that we were paying mm -hmm. on our loans. Um, and in the first budget, we were able to cap um, the EMAC funds, leaving some fiscal space for us. And we still have the other four. Uh, but clearly, we were at least successful on the expenditure part in the first year um, because we had a target of maybe 6.3% mm -hmm. um, deficit and we're able to bring it to 5.9, uh, given that uh, revenues also did not flow in mm. as much as we expected. Um, so I think by the end of the year, we also ensured with um, the president's um, push for leave no one behind, and mm. therefore always working on the preferential option for the poor, you know, make sure that um, uh, all citizens participate in whatever we had. Um, therefore, did the teacher's allowance, nurse's allowance, and the, and the senior high school mm. uh, program. Um, so it was quite a full year, um, but I, I think um, uh, remarkably successful okay. in that. So when you read your midterm budget in May, mm. you said to us that you had a revenue shortfall of 1.4 billion CDs. Mm. And therefore, you were coming back to Parliament to adjust certain taxes and to come mm -hmm. up with new tax measures to fill that gap. Mm -hmm. So in that budget, you said the new tax measures will yield 1.34 billion. And then tax compliance will bring in 500 million. Mm -hmm. So I listened to you when you read this new budget and your revenue is still short of what you targeted. Yeah. Why? Because you, 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 you did two things. You say you have new tax measures, which will yield 1.3, and then there's tax compliance, which will yield 500 million. Yeah. And then you give a whole list of things. Uh, you spoke about um, prosecution of tax evaders, special VAT attack force, tax audit measures, a lot of things. Yeah. So how come your... Revenue is still not enough after all these nice, nice things you, you said you were going to do. <laughs> um, uh, ben, I, I think, you know, um, we, we need to put um, things in, in perspective. Yes, we sort of decoupled the Get Fund and NHIL mm. um, from the VAT and, and expected to, uh, to, to rake in that. And then certain compliance measures um, that uh, we have started, and then the VAT attack that that you talked about, mm. um, we, we have not been able um, to accomplish all of that. In terms of the takeoff um, for for the decoupling, um, it took a while. There was also some expectations of um, electronic point of sale systems mm -hmm. um, that have not um, yet gone into operation. And then the excise um, stamp um, um, also what was delayed. Um, and so all of that, you know, sort of resulted in our being behind. But, but my, my feeling really, Ben, is that there's a lot of learning that one has gone through these 22 months. Mm. And um, um, I think all of us um, should really sort of strap in our seat belts uh, because next year is going to be sort of a major overhaul 
in our tax administration. But, but still on tax, do, do you feel that the tax measures you have put in place have been cost effective? I'll give you a very controversial example. Okay. The in the again in Diop, the the previous budget you said mm -hmm. that tax compliance will be boosted by the implementation of the common platform for communication traffic monitoring, mm -hmm. revenue assurance, mobile money monitoring, and fraud management. This common platform will provide government with an accurate and comprehensive view of telecom revenues in order to verify tax compliance and to ensure the comprehensive billing and collection of all revenue-related taxes. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much this has brought in? Because only last week or so, the Bank of Ghana wrote back to Ministry of Communications who were asking for information about people's yeah. mobile money data. It says, we can't even give you that information. Yeah, but, 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 so if you spend 18 million dollars <laughs> on, a, on a platform that's supposed to increase revenue, and the BOG is saying that we can't even give you the information you need. So I'm, I'm, my question is, is, was that policy even well thought through? Oh, in terms of thinking through, uh, it's not something that we are reversing. In terms of um, um, sort of... Uh, issues between Bank of Ghana and Ministry of Communication, you know, we'll, we'll sort that out. I mean, I, I met with, um, uh, with Ministry of Communication maybe 10 days ago, um, and I think we have a solution in which the GRA um, steps in to gather that information. Bank of Ghana was legitimately worried about the issue um, of the sanctity of information mm. because um, what the telcos have done in essence is to create a subsidiary company that is therefore responsible for that. Um, and as soon as you create that, then it allows Bank of Ghana mm. um, to be a monetary agency because you are kind of dealing um, with, 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 with currency, all of that. Um, but then um, GRA, Ministry of Finance, you know, has assurance rights on anything. Um, so I think we are... But how much are we expecting from that? investment into this revenue assurance, traffic monitoring revenue assurance. I'm asking this, Ken, because yeah. in 2016, we got $75 million from communication service tax. In yeah. 2017, we got $73 million. Now, if... It seems to be declining. <laughs> yeah, it, by $2, $2 million. So my question, if you are getting about $75 million from CST, and you are, you are, you are spending $89 million on a platform to assure of revenue. How much are you going to get from this? It, it, it suggests to me you're, you're expecting a lot of money from the telco side that you feel they are hiding, that you want to assure yourself of. So what's your projection? Um, I mean, I, I think um, all of us know our dependence on, 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 the, um, on, on the handset. And therefore, the increasing amount of business that is done for it and the centrality of it mm. to all of our lifestyle. Um, so, yes, we, we, we will have to invest, you know, in that platform, knowing very well that a lot of transactions going forward are going to be on this thing. Mm. So it's really a projection and getting ready, in a sense, for the future and knowing that we will be able to make to, to make. Could that we have spent that money buying shares in MTN? <laughs> I mean, MTN is the largest of the, all the companies. Yeah. They, they, they floated shares, and if you look at the distribution of those who bought the shares, right? I mean, not many Ghanaians. If you look at the value, even mm -hmm. though in volumes, a lot of Ghanaians bought in value, it was less than forty percent. Yeah. If we had spent that ninety million on buying MTN shares and own a large chunk of that company, would that not have been a better way of revenue assurance? We don't know. I mean, I, I think we can speculate on all of that. Okay, that's it, a speculation. It, it is. No, that's, I mean, that's a possibility, I mean, isn't it? I think the future uh, would, would show that um, having a grasp of, of the information uh, is more significant. The, the issue about the information, as you begin to think about big data, Ben, mm. um, is that one should now um, be able to, um, to take that type of data um, mm. or ascribe it to an individual, beginning to understand people's lifestyles and therefore the type of taxes that one may be able to uh, impose on them or to collect in terms of compliance. Um, so it, it has you know, many more possibilities. And when you realize that almost every Ghanaian is on the phone system, I think it becomes important that mm. we have complete visibility. How confident are you that your tax 
is progressive generally. I'm asking this question because recently uh, an academic from Birmingham University came to Accra and he showed us a spreadsheet of the top six Ghanaian banks, GCB, Ecobank, Fidelity, Stamp, Big Stanch, and Barclays. He showed us their profit after tax. And this is in the billions. And then he mm -hmm. showed us the tax that you, were, you had imposed, not you as Ken, but mm -hmm. 2017. And his point was that our banks need to pay more tax mm -hmm. because they make a lot more money. Our successful mm -hmm. banks. He mentions GCB, Ecobank, Fidelity, Stambic, Stanchard, Barclays. I'm contrasting this to some of the new taxes you impose. You try to, for example, do the luxury vehicle tax. You did the adjustment of income tax. And then you recalibrated the VAT. And then, of course, there are a lot of consumption and sales VAT type taxes. Mm -hmm. If you put all of this together, mm -hmm. I, I, how confident are you that you are you are, you are taxing the rich mm -hmm. and you're, you're sort of giving back to the poor and it's not the other way around. Um, I think the, I mean, in terms of tax uh, redistribution, um, so, so what do you do? You, you have the chance to supposedly tax the rich. You also have to understand where consumption patterns are so that, you know, through VAT you'll be able to collect um, taxes. But it's, it's, it's a constant, you know, academic and theory um, um, challenge as to how to balance regressive and progressive and what is the best. So you go to some places in Europe and it's 60% or so mm. because they, they have justified it in a certain way. Um, so I think we, we need to figure out, you know, what, what the balance is uh, going forward. But maybe the, 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 the more important issue is ensuring that everybody is part of it. Mm. You know, everybody, in a sense, um, contributes to this transformation that, that we are talking about. And therefore, the right of um, citizenship also leads to certain responsibilities. Um, that I that are important because I I think you know one's also sense of dignity um, is is enhanced when one is contributing and your ability mm. to demand your democratic rights mm. you know in terms of community etc etc uh, and and so those are things that mm. we we need. To but again, there's a feeling that on. we treat banks generally with kids gloves. And another example, tw twenty seventeen August. We had UT and Capital, right? And then 2018, August, we have the five more. We, in some of the documents, we've seen monies were spent supposedly bribing central bank officials. Till date, we don't know anybody who's been prosecuted. But if you look at the prioritization of resolution, of course, shareholders lost their monies, but you have protected depositors' funds. A lot of workers have gone home. And many people feel that the rich people who led to the collapse of these banks are being left off the hook. And the poor families of workers who will lose their jobs, they will mm -hmm. probably never get anything, depending on how well the receiver does. Mm -hmm. what, what's your comment? Uh, no, I, I think it's um, um, an unfortunate characterization. You, you are always caught uh, in any sort of constitutional system and with regards to using the laws and rules that we have, and you can't afford anarchy, be that mm -hmm. as it may. Um, uh, so, you know, what, what, what does the finance do? Um, you, you go through the process of IOKO, IOKO goes to AG, uh, etc. Um, but, but, but I think, you know, um, we, we can move in different directions and maybe enhance it. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that we should be having a tax court mm. um, so mm. that if, you know, maybe one, one line of prosecution is not happening, um, where we can use another. As you can see in this budget, um, um, the, the president ensured that we put um, a considerable amount of resources behind the special prosecutor um, so that we really ramp up um, his capacity. Um, to operate, and that all is leading to this issue of of justice for all um, that 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 we are all um, looking to do. Uh, I am confident that um, everybody will be pro brought to book. Mm. Uh, the question 
as you know, not getting into a system of uh, let the blood flow. Being, no, but if, uh, if, 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 you, if I may, there's an extract from um, a new economics book which is saying essentially that uh, mainstream economics heavily criticizes government regulation and intervention. Yet almost no proponent of deregulation argued against the bailouts that save Wall Street in the financial crisis. Regulation is criticized when it threatens profit opportunities, but welcome in instances where it provides government back insurance. Then it goes to the financial sector. This is global. The financial sector, which has significantly ballooned in the past decades, has enormously profited from bailouts, yet without suffering any consequences for the harm it caused the rest of the economy in the aftermath of the financial crisis. The large wages in the financial sector effectively constitute rent for those who manage it and offer no incentive to reform and reduce its size. A balloon financial system where the waste pro provides income for some of the highest earners in the economy that takes government bailouts when it fails is a good example that there is no invisible hand moving things towards optimal outcomes. Unquote. Very long way of saying that the, the rich guys always get away with it. And, and we the poor suffer for it. Uh, we the poor. <laughs> Interesting how uh, you categorize it. I mean, so you have, let's say, RBS in England. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they ended up paying, you know, um, all of the financing that, was, that happened with a good, you know, return for government. You had General Motors, for example, that government put money in, you know, during the 2008, um, whatever, mm. and that also put some return. So our expectation mm. is that we, we will be able to claw back um, this monies that we have. And the you know, judiciary uh, would also do their work in the long run to, to get these people in. Mm. We, we can't afford, but uh, you know, y you were faced with a chance with all of us, poor and rich, mm. of maybe 1.5, 1.7 million of us who had deposit in mm. the in the anarchy that would have ensued without that intervention. You weigh it against, and, and you do have to. So you are sure they will pay back? We, you, to you told us we borrowed nine billion it to plug the hole. It, uh, it will not be the taxpayer that pays. Eventually, those who led to the Collapse that, will pay for it. That, that really is the expectation that between the profitability of the institutions mm -hmm. that we have re restructured um, and then the receivers uh, doing the type of work that they should do mm. uh, and then the subsequent punishment that should occur. Okay. This is our expectation. Okay. This is the point of view. We're talking to Finance Minister Ken of uh, We'll take a breather. When we come back, are we borrowing too much? What is this century bond business? We have some of your comments and questions as well. For the finance minister, don't go away. Every day comes with its challenges. But there's someone you can trust and rely on to bring you hope for the future and joy for today. At the end of each day, you are stronger because you know that tomorrow will be better and brighter. That's the Ghanaian way. MoneyGram, bringing you closer. City TV is live. City TV is a free to air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience your world. City TV. It's your world. Welcome back. This is the point of view. My guest is Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata, and we're trying to sort of cross the T's and dot the I's 
in his 2019 budget. The big question we'll answer at the end of the program is, so what does economic transformation look like? Where, where is Nirvana? He will show us at the, <laughs> at the end of, of the equation. Ken, a lot of are concerned about debt. And yeah. let, let me read a few things to you on debt. So we found out that you budgeted 18.6 billion CDs in just paying interest on our debts. Yeah. That's more than twice how much you budgeted for capital expenditure. Yeah. So what that means in common English is that you're spending 8 billion on roads, bridges, and all those things. And you're spending a bit more than double of that paying people we owe. For how long is this trend going to continue? Is that not a problem? Um, it, it is. It is a major problem, you know. And you know, we we ratcheted up our um, our debt uh, portfolio from maybe thirty two percent of GDP mm. um, um, to the seventy three that um, we we inherited. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, which, which, which really, um, I, th I think it was about 122 billion, and, and we are somewhere around 170 uh, billion so far. Um, so we have about 48 billion of additional debt in in that period, mm. um, of which um, 10 billion is really an issue of what we did with the banking system. Another 10 billion uh, being a foreign exchange. Um, um, uh, recalibration as to what it means, um, uh, and then you know, we we did the euro bond, etc., and use the resource. But whatever it is, we were saddled with something really heavy. Even though, as you can see, mm -hmm. we've been having the primary balance uh, being positive, which means that the debt accumulation levels are much uh, you know, um, slower and actually declining than where we are. So we need to do something about this. Uh, we also work through the year to try and with some liability management um, to try and change the tenor um, so that the oppressive nature in the short term is relieved so we can do we can do some work um, but that's something that we have to find a way um, to, to to work out um, because it's 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 quite pernicious um, certainly with the rebasing um, so, um, the debt to GDP ratio comes down, but that does not really affect the debt sustainability. Uh, and so, how a are you going to get more revenue to pay for it? What is going to be your export drive to be able to have more resources for central uh, government to be able to do that? And that then is the work of the transformation that we should seek to do. But your revenues are not growing, as you said. Debt to GDP is not the best measure of Correct. debt sustainability. Mm -hmm. And now that you've rebased your economy, it means that your <laughs> tax revenue to GDP is now actually lower. We are now at um, about 12.5%, and we should be at 20%. But that, Ben, then tells you the, the gap. Uh, and therefore, um, if we are effective, uh, in bringing it to our, our peer levels, uh, the type of resources that we'll have to be able to um, to pay for this and do the work we have to do. Um, so next year really is, is, and I think I mentioned it in the budget, um, to underscore the importance um, of what we have to do uh, with, with GRA and the things that we have to do. And we are anchoring it with about 10,000 of the 100,000 NAPCO people. GRA, as you know, has about 6,200 um, employees, and we are bringing in uh, 10,000 uh, NAPCO people. Mm. Um, so we are, we are on the caps of a real fundamental change in the, in the operations of GRA as to what, how we are going you're, to... You're talking about the, the young people who will be helping GRA collect revenue? That's correct. We're talking about 10,000. I mean, assuming you have 6,200 people and now we have um, these 10,000 graduates coming to join, there's a whole different cultural reorientation, social reengineering, and asking ourselves, you know, what is the best structure um, for GRA to be, to be able to close this gap. But, but these people will be targeting informal sector workers and... I mean, no, we're going to train them for a whole series. I mean, you, because you've, 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 you've spoken about specialized audits in mining, oil and gas, telco services, and transfer pricing. I don't think NAPCO are going to do that. 
You, t- you I mean, no, head no, of no. McKinsey coming in I mean, to come and help us. You're talking about high level revenue. Yeah. These Napco guys are just are going to follow the sort of market women type tax. Why, why would you say that? I mean, when I when I finished college, yes, and I went to work on Wall Street, I was trained to be able to analyze uh, the most difficult companies. I, I don't think that of the ten thousand. So you people, mean? I can so find will Napco help us with? Auditing our oil and gas sector, for example. We're going to find, but you know, in any um, audit that you go to, there are various levels yeah, of expertise people train to. If I'm going to change um, GRA, it is these type of people that I need. Mm. You know, and so in the next three years, I think you're going to find a very different GRA, um, really? motivated, more educated. You know, committed to a certain plan. Um, so my excitement for next year is is the infusion of of these people. I was saying um, this morning that you know, I was reading Nehemia, and uh, he <laughs> talked about um, you know, yeah, using one hand to lay your brick and the other hand um, to have your hand mm. on your on your armor. Mm. So we're going to have these. Okay. Six thousand people in there, mm. and then with these ten thousand people joining us um, to okay. transform the place. So, in debt sustainability, you were saying you borrowed forty-eight billion more, ten of which went to solve the bank problem, which isn't really your, your fault. And then you are saying another ten was because of the forex issues. But I'm looking at, I'm trying to compare your borrowing to your predecessor's borrowing. Sure. Uh, just pardon me, January 20, I'm looking at Seth Tech's borrowing. A lot of his bonds were five years, three years, and then he even did a 10 year mm-hmm. domestic bond in November of 2016. So he did five years, three years, two years, 10 years, five years, three years, two years. You did in 2017 mm-hmm. your um, first Euro bond, uh, $2 billion, your nine local bonds, three year, five year, seven year, 10 year. And then you also did six bonds in 2018, ranging between two to five years. For the uninitiated, this looks very similar. Mm. But you said, you, you, you seem to suggest that you are extending the tenure, which means you are, you are having longer term debt. Yeah, but we did. Didn't so we? just, just prove that with more facts. Yeah. How, sh- how, how do you convince us that the, the debt you are taking on is cheaper for us and better than what he took on? Well, first you, you start with the interest rates. I mean, wh- where are we? Um, inflation 15.4 to single diggers, um, treasury bills uh, coming down to um, 13% or so. So in, in fact, you know, the, the, the cost of capital is different. When we went to the euro bond, uh, we had what? Um, extended maturity to 30 years for the first time. Um, $2 billion, the largest that we've had and the lowest rates that we've ever had, okay? So, I mean, th- th- those are, are clear facts as to how to manage yourself or reorganize yourself. But then you need credibility to be able to go long. And when you see uh, SMP deciding for the first time in a decade uh, to upgrade um, um, our, our ratings is also an indication of that. So in terms of issues of proof, uh, Bernard, um, you know, um, the, 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 the macro numbers are very clear to all of us. The cost of capital is very clear to all of us. The maturity profile has changed uh, considerably um, mm-hmm. since we came into it. And, and that is what um, we, we truly feel like the stabilization has been done and therefore going forward is now the issue of beginning uh, this whole sense of transformation okay. and therefore infrastructure. You mentioned a century bond, which we understand to be borrowing and paying back in 100 years. Is that what it means? That's, that, that's a term. That's um, a century bond. So you, yeah. you pay back in 100 years. What it really means, uh, Bernard, is... Uh, um, you know, you, we were going to organize sort of a, a shelf program in a sense, so looking for $50 billion um, dollars over a certain period of time. Um, uh, and we are saying that, you know, Ghana um, should be looked at as a long-term play. And we ourselves 
um, should, should stop thinking of, of, of hand to mouth and looking at ourselves as a long term play. So you talk about century bond, but in between there are usually 40, 45 years, 50 years, tenor, etc. Mm. Um, and you try to then get um, um, better rates for that because you are a unique country. But more significantly also, as we move out of the IMF um, situation, mm. um, I think there has to be a sense of security and permanence. And we should have a more programmatic way in which we, we build our infrastructure, which is needed. Some people think that you are tying our unborn children to debt. If, if, you, go, if you borrow money and say you are paying back in 40, 50, 60 years, it means our kids who are 2, 3, 4, 5, when they are in their mid-40s, yeah. will still be paying. You know, in all of these things, it's, it's, it's various uh, maturities that go to build a portfolio for your country. Uh, and the issue about your need for for your infrastructure, you, you weigh it uh, against the future and whether, uh, what do you borrow for um, to make sure that um, there's the sustainability, you have the capital, that it is productive uh, in the long run um, so that you get your money back, um, that you open up the country um, so that you can use your resources uh, more effectively and then you have a program. But, um, but again, a lot of politicians back. say the same thing. They say it depends what you use the money for. But after, generally after every four years, you have a deficit you have to pay for. The roads, some of the roads deteriorate in a couple of years. Yeah. Okay. And the other point is that when we check the countries that had gone for the so-called century bond, mm -hmm. some of the countries make me a bit afraid. Argentina, Mexico, these are not the best examples of China, countries. China, well, uh, well, some before. I mean, Austria, uh, Argentina, uh, Mexico, uh, these are the kind of countries yeah. you want to China, be in the same. I think England might even have done some before. I mean, so it's good, it's good. But I mean, uh, Bernard, I mean, the, and I understand the, the cynicism, but truly... It's skepticism, not cynicism. Uh, well, it's, I'm not, it's, uh, it's, both, both of that. We know. are skeptical. Both, both we are not cynical. Through. Yeah, but skepticism then is, it's, it's, so look at what, has, what the Republic has done in the 22 months that mm -hmm. we've been in and how we feel, all of us, about our country mm. uh, since January 2017 to now. I think it's a very different texture uh, of a sense of who we are as a people and the macroeconomics are quite clear. What I mean, so that uh, when we, we then launch what we are launching uh, with regards to infrastructure, industrialization, agriculture, entrepreneurship, there's a certain belief that um, uh, we mean business and that um, the president's um, vision for a Ghana beyond aid uh, is on track. Mm. Here are some questions for you. Uh, much has been made about the exit from IMF. With the announcement that Ghana is exiting IMF, many people are expecting employment into the public sector. How will government meet this expectation when wages, salaries and em emoluments already consume a huge chunk of your revenue? Yeah, well, we are not going to be looking to expand the public sector. The whole thrust of, of this program is how do you expand the private sector to respond um, to that and give the necessary employment. Um, certainly um, the infrastructure works uh, will lead to you know um, quite a bit of uh, employment mm. uh, in the but then that opens up the, the country uh, for us to take um, advantage of our um, agriculture and resources um, that are tied up uh, in the, um, I think if you look at the uh, planting for food program, um, uh, they have uh, so far um, touched about 577,000 farmers. Um, the target is to go mm. um, towards a million farmers in the, you know, the, the, I think was it two or two and a half weeks ago, the president launched the Ghana uh, Commodities Exchange and it looks, it looks, you know, like a very sort of remote entry into uh, our landscape. But I remember I was here when, in 1990, we launched the Ghana Stock Exchange, mm. uh, three million CDs, which seemed to have meant nothing. Mm. Um, today it's about 56 billion, and it is, it, it is those institutional changes uh, that will lead to the type mm. of impact. Um, that we are talking, we are talking about. Mm. You, you mentioned that there was progress with the National Development Bank. In the past, we thought that was supposed to be a merger of ADB and NIB. 
it looks like the plan has changed. Can you clarify? Um, uh, I think the, I mean, the, the, the challenge that we have with um, both ADB and uh, NIB is that they do, they, they are not meeting their capital adequacy ratio. And uh, the, the thought is, um, why, why don't we uh, merge the two of them to mm-hmm. create a really solid, solid agri and agri business um, institution? Uh, and then um, start um, also a new development bank. Um, uh, two weeks ago, um, NIB did meet um, with the central bank um, to talk about, um, you know, how they are faring. And, and we have a, a program meeting um, at the end of this week um, so that we'll then be able to make um, sort of a final decision. So it's not on, clear on, on whether the, on the way forward, we will whether to to to, to merge them two. completely, um, so that it becomes one institution and start uh, a whole um, new new one, um, or whether mm. it's, it's salvageable. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about the bauxite sino hydro. Yeah. It was prominent in your midterm budget, and you listed a lot of roads that you were going to do with a two billion bauxite thing. Um, where is the money? Um, I think we've gone. I mean, we were in um, in China for Fokak, uh, in which we met with Sino Hydro. The president was there, uh, and the agreement really with Sino Hydro was to start this year. Mm. Um, once we go through our parliamentary process, so that even before uh, financial close, they'll be able to get some pickaxes, you know, on the roads, uh, and therefore we selected. I think five um, projects or regions: um, the Tamale Interchange, parts of the Eastern Corridor Road in the mm-hmm. Volta region, um, the road to Nyinahini um, to make it accessible, and roads in Central and Western region as a start off. Um, I think we are in good shape to, to do that. Uh, the parliamentary uh, process is going on well. We've signed um, most of the agreements, so we are truly comfortable. Um, with um, with the infrastructure drive for for next year um, through the two billion sino hydro. We are project. primarily exporters of raw materials. You've you said in the past that that has to change. We are yes. price takers in cocoa. That has to change. Mm-hmm. I, I'm wondering when the change will start because I have a list of Ghana's mm-hmm. imports mm-hmm. and exports, and I'll mm-hmm. show some on the screen. Yeah. We imp- I mean, very sad, isn't it? It's amazing. It's Our number one import is, is rice, is that right? I mean, for food, yeah. interestingly, cane sugar, palm oil, rice, wheat, mm-hmm. tomatoes, yeah. milk, chicken, uh, Tooth- tea, toothpicks, prepared and preserved <laughs> fish, frozen fish. This is just the food side. Yeah. And it's, it's I, I don't know what you are. Uh, uh, two, you will say two years, you sort of. Yeah. When do you. So hope to change this. Yeah. I mean, if, if, and I'm just showing viewers, 22% of our food is raw sugar imported, mm-hmm. processed tomatoes 9.5%, flavored water 6.4%, animal food. I mean, yeah. all these things I are important. I think it's, it's, it's basically very embarrassing, isn't it? Uh, we have sand, we have sand, we have water, and we have... Um, and some of these are 20, 2017 figures, Ken. And, and we have... Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, Bernard, you are structurally changing uh, the things that we do, and um, we we have, in a sense, established some amount of consolidation, and macro stability, and then moving on to the type of programs that um, um, we have announced, um, and so we we should be able to do this. I mean, in terms of. Uh, looking at, uh, let's say, poultry, for example, mm. and then what do you do? That's about maybe three hundred and forty odd million dollars a year. You know, how how do you tackle that? So that would mean that maize and soya, you know, are sort of planted for us to have enough of it mm. to be distributed. How do I link it to my school feeding program mm. um, so that I have almost a guaranteed purchase scheme um, for people who would do that? Mm. And and it's, it's all a three five year plan, you know that has to be three back. five year plan. But but the the people of Ghana must also uh, begin to understand the type of sacrifices that that may have to occur 
if we make a decisive decision that let's say we are eliminating poultry from being imported, what does that mean in the interim? And what to because work of all the things we import of the food, sugar is the number one, palm oil, and rice. We've done. We, I'm told maize. We no longer import maize, but maize is not on the list. The yeah. only maize we import is for chicken feed. Yeah. So a lot of the maize we eat is it's produced here. So of the things million. we spend money on, the Commander Sugar Factory, we don't know what's happening to it. Mm -hmm. We have Rise. lots of oil palm plantations in the western region. Yet we oil palm is the, the palm oil is the number two food import, mm -hmm. and then rice is number three. Mm -hmm. Although we have all these big big estuary rice things, so. When will planting for food and jobs and these your policies trans uh, change this dependence on food imports? Tomatoes is number four on the list of yeah, food. Yeah, I mean, tomato factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you know the the issue of tackling all of this um, includes um, the issue of, of of financing and then giving the appropriate extension services to all of these people. Um, and, and the steps have been taken. I mean, this year, I think our food basket uh, is showing quite a bit of a difference if mm. as how you see inflation trending down. You are beginning to get supply. Now you need marketing, warehousing, production services. And that's where sort of the IPEP um, comes in, the, these um, development authorities to make sure that um, production increases in these areas. How do you turn these into factories? Mm. Um, I think I can understand the impatience um, for that. But really, after 60 years of, of, of rolling back things, mm. um, I think for 22 months, we, we are setting the infrastructure base for people to be thinking about different ways of doing things um, for us to do that. Mm. I will take a short break. When we come back, a few questions for you and also more about the economic transformation agenda. This is the point of view. We're talking to Ken Ofriata, his Minister for Finance. He his budget on Thursday, and he's been on a roll, different uh, programs. Today, he did two events, PwC, KPMG, Budget, Fora, and he's on the point of view. Don't go away. Of your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. Those really guys who were supposed to protect them, I'm sure by now somebody must have, done, have all of them arrested. Hmm. They must all be arrested because it's an unprovoked attack. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7 30 a.m. to 10. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Join us for breakfast daily, only on City TV. Welcome back. Let's read more of your comments for the finance minister. Hi, Bernard. Ask finance minister. Um, Conclusion. Okay, Bernard, as a finance minister, his take on calls to review our system of reading the budget. Should re he review the 75 pages he reads in Parliament? Philip Marse and Ashaman. Bernard, ask the minister why his government allows cheap imports of evaporated milk to make factories here in Ghana drop production volume in their industrialization drive. It's affecting the city and creating losses of jobs and sustainable revenue. Why? This is Kofi. Bernard, kindly ask Ken what about casual staff recruitment into the permanent payroll? We were thinking the budget will capture it, but we never heard anything. Any plan for casual stuff? Ben, I love your show. This government is boring too much. Please tell him that we need $1 million for our constituency. Well, you didn't mention your constituency. Ben, as a finance minister, the percent of pay increase for public sector workers, I'm very concerned about that. this. This is Chris from Dan Suman. Um, I want to know from the finance minister how sure we are that the Sinohydro cash will come. Because it looks like the government has hinged a lot of our infrastructure investments on this deal come 2019. Kojo Amuansa in Accra. Bernard, as finance minister, if he is concerned about the suffering and plight of unemployed staff of X Capital and UT Bank, severance payments are still pending while these families struggle. When will he intervene so severance is paid? Henry Elom. 
Ben, the Upper East Region is last when it comes to sporting facilities, stadium and air transport, airstrip or airport. Please ask the minister whether the government has any plan for my region in terms of these facilities. Thank you, Stephen Nkanga, Nabdam District. And then it's an interesting question from Emmanuel watching from Tema. Bernard, will 2019 be a better year? <laughs> Maybe that's a good that, question. That's a great question, isn't it? Will 2019 <laughs> be a better year? <laughs> I don't know what you... There are so many questions and we have yeah, a couple of we seconds. Yeah, we have a little time. Mm. Um, no, truly 2019 um, is going to be a, a better year, a, a much a much better year. And we called it the Impunto. Uh, budget um, for reasons that um, um, the development sh should start. You know, getting out of the IMF program and saying that uh, we now have this fiscal sovereignty um, to do what, what we choose to do in a way that um, is, is sensible and mm. touches, touches everybody. But um, mm. not only are we putting a lot of resources behind infrastructure, and the reason why we, we shouldn't really. I think the Vice President uh, negotiated very well and hard with Sino Hydro and, and the resources will come for it. Um, so I don't think we should worry. Mm. And when we came into government within a space of two, three and a half months, because of the credibility and network we had, mm -hmm. we were able to put together $2.2 .2 billion um, dollars equivalent. Um, and that really enabled us to go through. Um, this year we went to um, the Eurobond market also raised $2 billion, mm. um, in which um, it was about four times it was subscribed. Um, so the capacity to take to get the type of resources required is not. Mm. And then the reason why I mentioned the issue of the primary balance uh, being positive for the first time, it just shows that the rate of accumulation um, of debt is very different from the 49 and 20 percent we inherited mm. now into into the teens and also extending the curve um, to make sure that it's not pernicious um, to us. Um, but um, uh, beyond infrastructure is then industrialization and um, uh, we, we believe we put together a package of a billion dollars for that and then supporting agriculture and entrepreneurship because in the end is how to get people working but on a private sector basis, not uh, imposing more people um, on the payroll of government uh, because that is not really the direction we want to go as, as a society. Um, so yes, um, 2019 is going to be a much better year. And it's also a much better year because uh, the, one of the Achilles heels has always been um, the issue of domestic revenue mobilization. How do we get digitalization? How do we get enforcement? Uh, and I think the anchor um, of the 10,000 NAPCO people are going to have a dramatic um, difference in how we organize ourselves for compliance going forward and the type of work we've done in the mining industry mm. and the type of work we are doing for property taxes uh, mm. that are eminent. We'll have more time to discuss these later. I'll end with Dominic's comment. He says, Bernard, the issue of our imports is not a production problem. It's also a consumption problem. People complain about unemployment, yet they have high appetite for everything imported, including imported bottled water. They forget the link between consumption and employment. This is Dominic sending that in. Ken, we've, it's been a long day. We thank you for spending some time with us mm -hmm. on the point of view. And for those whose questions I couldn't read, I really apologize because we wanted to go through a few more things. But we'll try and get Ken again later on to speak to us. Ken, thank you very much. I have to end of something. Oh, you've, you, you, I thought you said 2019 would be a better year. It will be, and, uh, Christmas, and, be and uh, Christmas will be good, will be as, as was said. And, uh, but more importantly, I, I, I love to end with this, um, which is from uh, Revelations 3, 7, 8. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a beautiful one. Mm -hmm. I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door mm -hmm. which no one can, can shut. shut. I think the door is open and it's up to us. And that was to the church in is it Philadelphia? Philadelphia. You're pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Kenneth Ferranta, you know, Minister of Finance, speaking to us on his budget. Thank you for watching, and there'll be a replay of this program tomorrow in the afternoon at 2 p.m. if you're watching. My name is Bernard Avle. Stay with City TV. Good night. <laughs>
The Point of View is sponsored by MoneyGram, bringing you closer.